everybody welcome to my channel and we are going to learn how to make this mini file cabinet today so uh, keep watching and let's get started I'm going to start by making uh, two boxes like this so you're going to need I'll show you how to make the first one and then you're just going to duplicate the second so you're going to need a piece of cardstock that is 10 and 3 quarter by 9 and 3 quarter and I'm using about 80 pound weight and then you need to score it on all four sides at a half an inch and three inches so you're going to score on all four sides so I've already scored mine so Now you're going to want to cut, um, you have basically four squares in the corners and then you have a half inch edge um, or scored piece on each end. And so what we're going to do is we're going to cut off that half of an inch on all four corners. And so I'll do this one and then you'll see what I mean. So I'm cutting that half an inch strip up to the three inch score line. And then I'm doing the same thing on this side. Oh my goodness, I'm having a hard time seeing my score line here. Okay, so uh, it's going to look like this. You're going to do that on all four sides. Okay, so now your paper should look like this. And now we're going to, um, these corners are going to make the tabs that fold over to make our box. And these edges right here are what we're going to use to fold over the top of the box. So we're going to need to pinwheel this paper. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut on the left side of this square I'm going to cut all the way up to the three inch line and then I'm going to turn the paper and do the same thing I'm going to cut on the left side of the square up to the three inch line and then I'll just continue to do that to the other two sides Okay, so now I don't feel like I quite need the tabs to be this big, so I'm going to go ahead and cut them in half. Okay, so now uh, we're going to go ahead and just slightly angle these tabs here and also um, the, little, um, the little tabs we made for the side of the box and for the top. So we just want to angle these a bit and then angle these a bit as well. Okay, so now your paper should look like this. So now we're ready to go ahead and burnish all of the fold lines. So I like to cut on the side that has the groove after I've scored, and then I like to turn it over and fold on the ridges. Okay, so now our box is ready to glue together, and um, a lot of times when I'm making a box, I there's two ways that I can fold this. I can fold it on the inside and cover the tabs with design paper on the inside, or I can fold on the outside. Since I'm going to be sliding the drawers in and out of these boxes, I'm going to go ahead and fold these on the outside, and then I'm going to be covering this with design paper anyway so um, but on the the next two boxes that we make we are going to fold on the inside so you just want to line those two corner pieces up so it's nice and straight And 
then just continue to do all four sides. Okay, so now my box is all folded, and now I need to go ahead and cut the chipboard pieces for the box. Okay, so now we need to cover the back of the file cabinet and add some heavy weight or some medium weight chipboard. And so I've cut this one to four and three quarter by three and three quarter, and then I've put the same size of cardstock on one side, and I'm going to glue this to the um, bottom of the box here. Okay, for this side, you're going to need two pieces that are three and three quarter by two and three eighths, and you're going to need two pieces that are four and three quarter by two and three eighths, and then of course you're going to cut the same size of cardstock and adhere it to one side. And now I suggest on all of the chipboard pieces that you do a dry fit before you glue anything down, especially when we're trying to get these corners nice and snug in here. Um, we may need to trim one piece down a little bit. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and, oh, and you also want to make sure that it's not your piece is not going above this score line here. So you're going to push it down as far as you can to the bottom and just make sure you've got a room for that score line to fold over the edge of the chipboard. So these two end pieces fit. I'm going to go ahead and glue these in and then um, I will uh, just trim these down until they get I get a nice fit on the sides and then I'll glue those sides in. All right, so I ended up cutting my sides to four and five eighths, and it's a really nice snug fit, and you're just really going to have to um, kind of slide it in there and push it up against the edge of the box when you glue it down. Um, it's just going to give you a really nice tight corner, though, so it'll look really nice instead of having a gap. So, um, But you need to measure. Um, I think it's just not any two cutters are the same and so it's just best to measure your box as you go okay all right so now we just need to finish up the top of the box and I'm just going to fold all these edges over the chipboard just to give it some paper the paper some memory of where it needs to go and so I'll have a nice crisp fold over the edges of my box and then once I folded all of these down, then I'm just going to go ahead and glue. Okay, so now uh, my box is nice and finished. And so now all we need to do is glue them together, top and bottom, like this. And then we'll have the base for our file cabinet. Okay, so I have the two boxes glued together, and now I'm just going to cover up the sides and the back with some cardstock just to cover up that seam there and give it a more finished look. Plus, I don't want that seam showing when I put the design paper on. So I've cut a piece of paper that is seven and a half by nine and three quarter, and so I've got my nine and three quarter across here, and I'm going to score two and a half inches on each side. Anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and glue it on just like that. All right, so I have decorated my box with design paper and I was just going to give you a little hint on how to cut the paper, especially if you're using something that you need to have in a vertical direction. So the first thing you want to do is cut, um, if you have a cutter like this, you want to cut from bottom to top. Um, so I've got this one at seven and a half, and I'm just going to cut off the top here. Cut our top from that. And you're going to cut this um, four and three quarter wide and then two and a half tall. Okay. Now the side you're going to turn this over. So this is the height that we need. 
and especially if you're doing something where you want it to wrap around in a certain direction um, what you'd want to do is you'd want to cut you're going to start from the right and you're going to cut two and a half inches like that and then you're going to cut at four and three quarter and then you're going to cut again at two and a half. Now if your paper isn't directional you just don't even have to worry about it. I'm just thought I'd give you this little tip just in case or maybe you have stripes and you want them to go a certain direction um, then you just want to make be aware of how you cut your paper so anyway yeah now I have this um, you can see how it all lines up you know um, if you had a pattern that you wanted to keep in a certain order um, as it's wrapped around your box then you would cut it like that all right Okay, so to make our drawers, we're going to need two pieces of paper for each drawer. So you're going to need to cut them eight and a half by six and seven eighths. And so we got to make these just a little bit different. So you're going to put it, your paper so that the six and seven eighths is going across the top and you're going to score at a half an inch and then you're going to flip it to the opposite side and you're going to score at half an inch again and then you're going to score at four inches Then you're going to flip it once to the right at 90 degrees, and then you're going to score half an inch and four inches. Okay, and you're going to do all of them the exact same way. You want to do it in the exact order that I just showed you. Okay, it's just really important that you do it that way. Okay, so now on your paper, you will have three rectangle areas in between the score lines. And then you're going to have one square in the corner here. So we're going to cut the half inch edges off of that square. All right, so now you have, if you flip it to the right, now you have this little um, rectangle here, and this is the ends of your box. And you need this little tab here at the end. So you have a little teeny square right here um, with your score lines, and you're going to cut that one off. Okay, and then you can just angle the edges there. Okay, and then you're going to cut off this half inch strip right here, not all the way. So you have this little rectangle area here. You want to keep that. So I'm going to cut right here. So this piece here we want to cut off. Okay. So I'm going to turn it over just because it's easier for me to cut from looking at it this way. So now you have something that looks like this. And so this is a little bit different too. We're going to cut on the right side of this square, the square here and a score line on the right. We're going to cut up to this score line here. So um, I'm just going to cut it like right up to there, like that. And then this piece makes the other tab that goes the other way so we're going to cut that oh we don't need it to be very big so i'm going to cut it to about 
an inch maybe. And I'm going to go ahead and angle those edges. Okay, so all that's left to do is to just angle the edges of this tab here. And, and that's it, we're good to go. So you're gonna do the same thing uh, with all the other three pieces of paper. And so then I like to just flip it over so I'm folding on the ridges. Okay, so now we need to put the two pieces together. And so what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to put the bottoms on top of each other. So um, I'm just gonna set this one on top of this one. And so obviously you have, you know, the sides on the opposite and the ends on the opposite. Um, so you want this top bottom piece to go right up to that score line, but not over it. And then also it should meet up right next to this score line here. And then just do a double check and make sure that this edge here is not going over the fold. If you think you need to trim just a little bit more off of there, then you can. Um, but mine looks pretty good, so I think it's good to go. And so anyway, it's just gonna be glued together just like that. And I have one already glued together and so you're really going to put it together the same way as we did before except that again these tabs are going to go inside of our box and they need to go inside because we don't want them um, impeding going into the drawer as we slide it in and out so I will get all of these um, glued together and then we're ready to go from there All right, so I started the next step before I realized I wasn't recording, so I do apologize about that. But now we need to get our chipboard pieces into the boxes. And all of the chipboard pieces are going to be covered on one side with cardstock. And then it's really important that you do a dry fit before you glue anything down. We want our pieces to be snug and make nice corners, but we don't want them bulging the box especially at the corners where it could eventually just rip and ruin our whole box in the end. So um, the bottom piece is four and a half by two and three eighths. And I've already got my bottom pieces in my box. And then I like to do the ends next. My ends I cut at two and three eighths by three and three eighths. And you just wanna make sure that it's just a nice fit. Okay, so now I'm going to fit this side, make sure it's A-OK. -okay. okay, so now I've got my end pieces in. And now we're going to put in the side pieces. And these I cut to four and three eighths by three and three eighths. Um, again, this is um, where I had to trim just a hairline off of one side, but that's why I say do a dry fit first, because you might not have to do that. Um, you might have to trim a little bit more than I did. So it's just really important that you um, um, get a nice fit, but at the same time, you don't want it pushing so much that it's bulging the corners of your box. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this piece in. And I'm not going to do the other side. So I've got this one with all three sides in. I'm not going to finish with the other side yet. And I'm going to be putting a metallic pull on the front of mine. And these are actual furniture poles, so they come with screws. I'm going to be replacing those screws with brads. And so that is why... I said only do three sides of your chipboard inside your box. 
So I lost the recording where I show putting the metal poles in, but basically I just put the design paper on first, then I poked the holes where the brads should be on the metal poles, and then once they were nice and tight in there, then I put the final chipboard piece inside of the drawer. Now, of course, you can do any type of pull that you would like on your drawer. I do show a ribbon pull here, so that's an example. I do have a suggestion if you're going to be doing something like a knob pull or something that is glued on top of your drawer, on top of the design paper, just make sure that your paper is glued down really, really well. I had an experience where I had a knob that pulled in the middle. It didn't come off, but it just had a little bubble there in the center because I did not glue down very well. And um, I'll just give you the measurements for my paper here. I did four and three eighths by three and three eighths. You can have a larger offset if you would like. That's a design choice. For the inside of the drawers, you're going to need four total, two for each drawer. Four and a quarter inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. And for the ends, two and an eighth inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. So if you're making this project for the swap, you're going to need six mini bio folders and you can cut them out any way that you choose. You can cut them by hand. You can use your electronic machine, which is what I did. As long as they are four and a quarter inches wide and very close to three and three eighths inches tall, which is what mine are. I will put a link to the file that I used below and you are going to need to have some kind of decoration on the front and back, whether it's design paper or some kind of paint, watercolor, mixed media. Um, the inside does not have to be covered and you will need to have tabs on your file folders, whether they're cut out like this or a punch or whether you're just using a loop of ribbon or whatever other creative way you have to make a tab. Um, they need to be decorated in some way. Uh, for a full, to see the full walkthrough, I'll put a link to that below and you'll see how I've decorated all of my file folders and my file cabinet. So that's it for the tutorial. And if you do have any comments or questions, um, please leave them below. If I don't get back to you within a couple days, that means for some reason I didn't see it, so just try again. And um, anyway, so thanks so much for watching, and I would love it if you guys would give me a thumbs up and hit that little notification bell so you can catch me for my upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.